All right, so there are actually a few more things we need to cover uh, in in terms of the, the theory here. Uh, but I wanted to use, I made a little outline here as I went through, and I wanted to use this as a, for my talking point. So uh, we've introduced um, three different methods for finding the roots of an equation. We, we have the graphical methods, we have bracketing methods, and we have open methods. The graphical method is simply just plot the function out and, and see where the roots are. And I have a, a couple of examples where we show that in practice. Uh, we have bracketing methods. Those are the first methods we introduced. The bisection method and the false position method are both bracketing methods. Um, and then we have open methods, fixed point iteration, newton raphson method, secant method, another one that I'm going to introduce in a minute, which is inverse quadratic inter interpolation. And so in, in, in putting all this up here, what I really wanted to talk about, one of the main things, is so some of the pros and the cons for each method. Okay, so the graphical method, for example, the graphical method uh, is great. It's really nice because it gives you a feel for not just what the root is, but for what the function in general looks like. So, graphing met graph graphical methods are sort of nice uh, in turn in that it's nice to graph out the function. One of the big drawbacks of graphical methods. And I've written it here is the graphical methods require a high number of function evaluations uh, compared to the other methods. I mean, because you have to space out all your points and evaluate the function at all of those points, and and this this works pretty well for for uh, a simple function um, in in only two dimensions, plotting it out and everything. But but it it turns out uh, that some functions are actually very costly to evaluate. So you really um, you need to be wary about evaluating function that many times, okay? And the other thing is that when you're looking at the roots and you're just trying to eyeball the graph, you got some imprecision there. So while it's still a good idea to plot out your function to see what's going on, it's probably not the most precise method for getting an exact root, okay? But, um, okay, so that's that's graphical methods. Now we have bracketing methods. Uh, bracketing methods are actually a very reliable method. It's good to have these guys around. Uh, bracketing methods don't diverge, and I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit more about divergence, uh, convergence, divergence, and cycling here in a minute, but, but gra bracketing methods uh, don't diverge. In other words, they're dependable. Okay, that's one word that we could use to describe bracketing methods. They're dependable. They get closer and closer. Um, and and so they're dependable. Uh, open methods, uh, these these fixed point iteration, Newton Raphson secant method. Open methods, they're often faster than the bracketing methods. Okay, the bracketing methods can be super fast. Uh, or excuse me, the open methods may be really fast, except uh, the open methods have other problems because uh, they might diverge or they might cycle um, and never converge to a root. Uh, get a little better idea. I think I might have mentioned divergence actually when I talked about uh, fixed point iteration. Uh, fixed point iteration you may actually be going along and divergence is when you get further and further and further from the right answer. And that'll actually show up, uh, I mean, sometimes you know you're diverging, which which is good that you at least know that you're diverging, um, which, which simply means that you, you keep checking and your error is getting larger and larger and larger. And so even your approximate error, and so that's that's when that's happening. Your method is diverging; it's not working. Uh, you should give up that method and try something different because if it's not working, that's bad. Okay, and then we have this cycling problem. Uh, let me just talk real quick about the cycling problem, at least in the context of the Newton-Raphson method and the secant method. You'll recall that the New Newton-Raphson method uh, was this method that we had that used the function and its derivative. So I, I wrote that in here to have a little a little reminder. The Newton-Raphson method uses the function and its derivative, and uh, in the book it actually gives it actually gives uh, these examples, and I'll I'll put them up on the I'll, I'll draw them out here for you. Um, but let's just let's just show you something. So so let's say let's 
Well, let's say here we go. Um, yeah. All right. So let's say we have a function, and it goes like this. Let's see. Let's get some axis on here. All right. Here's my axis. And so let's say we have some function, and the function goes like, like this. Woo. And it goes like that. All right. So if you have the newton raphson method or the secant method, because the secant method it attempts to to approximate the derivative, and so it's basically going to behave the same way as the newton raphson method. So everything in the book that that they talk about that applies to the secant method, it applies to the newton or the newton raphson method. It, it really applies to the secant method too. If if the secant method is doing a decent job of approximating the derivative, then you have the same problems. All right. So this tries to shoot down and approximate the root down here okay and so then you get one here and it comes in here right and it tries to come in shoot down and approximate the root down here so then you get back over here and you come down and try to approximate the root uh, in fact actually I think you're gonna get a little further away you try to try to approximate the root and you're gonna get something way off in there and you come in here and then you try to evaluate the root and you're going to get something back in here and so that may get you a little closer here right because uh, you know you, you evaluate the function here okay so then you shoot back down and then you have this problem where you're sort of bouncing back and forth and that can actually happen indefinitely um, uh, and that's cycling and you'll recall here that even though see we do have a root right we do have a root if we were to extend this axis down where it goes. And we actually do have a root right here, right? There's a root, and that's really the guy that we're looking for. Um, but, but we're sort of getting stuck over here. And so this is this is one of the problems. If this happens, if we get stuck indefinitely, then that's called cycling. Um, if we if, if we're if we're just going back and forth and back and forth, that's called cycling. If we're actually getting further and further and further away, then then that's just plain divergence. Okay. So anyway, so so this is this is a problem. So now you know what cycling is. Now you know what divergence is. Uh, now we can jump back over here. Okay. So secant method. The secant method uses uses two points. I mean, it only uses one starting point, and then you just perturb it a little bit by some delta x to get your second point. Okay. So that's where um, actually one thing that I wanted to talk about here is. Let me move this up. Uh, well, no, I'm not going to move it up. Let me just fold some of these things here. So bisection method graph. Okay. So let's close this and close this and close this. Okay. So the pros and cons. Uh, we talked about the pros and cons. We talked about the they might fail. They might diverge. They might cycle. Uh, those are problems. Open methods are are often faster than bracketing methods. Okay. So, so there's some pros. All right. So now I want to talk about the secant method compared to the false position method. Okay. The secant method and the false position method, let me pull out their equations because if you look at their equations, they look like they're almost exactly the same thing. All right, so I took a second and I grabbed the equations for the false position method and for the secant method. And if we look at these things, hey, hey, come on, erase this, this line I don't like there. Okay, and if we look at these equations, uh, we see that they're actually very similar, right? So we have the x, the root is equal to the upper uh, minus uh, f of x upper, x lower minus x upper. Okay, so you see this equation, right? And you see this equation. Well, they look exactly the same. Uh, x upper, x i. Okay, because and then and then when we have x lower, we have x i minus one, which is which is going to be lower than xi and so when you look at these equations they look exactly identical okay except just using a little bit different notation but these methods are actually distinct and we need to understand the difference between them and the difference between them is this when I explain them uh, you should be able to see but the false position method is if we have some some function right and we're trying to take the root let's Let's grab our thing, and then let's put another one here. Well, actually, that's it's not enough space. Let's get more space here. I'm going to move this over so we have more room to talk about the differences here.
just one second. Let me all right, so I fixed it. I, I put these graphs in here and separated it out so, so it was easier to do my explanation here. Now, what we have then is the false position method. Okay, so the false position method, and, and we're going to go for this second route here. Like I said, you're going to have to use your imagination, and, and I know that's sloped a little bit. And, and th these are actually, think of them as the same equation. I know I can't draw exactly the same equation very well, but with with the seek with the false position method you have to bracket the root so we'll say we got a guess here and we got a guess here and we're gonna we're gonna draw this line in between and we're gonna bam right there zoom in on that right that's what we're doing with the false position method however with the secant method we're not we start with one point so let's say it was this point okay we start with one point and then we just perturb that a little bit by say delta x and who knows maybe we'll go well we'll go here right uh, and then we're going to be going shooting down to uh, our guess to the root and so you see that in the one case we've bracketed it right this is a bracketing method we have bracketed the root and that's why we use this notation lower and upper we've bracketed the root there's no you don't have the same divergence problems that we might have with the secant method which is really very similar to as as, as I discussed before which is really very similar to the newton raphson method because the newton raphson method uses the actual derivative and the secant method just approximates the derivative by perturbing it a little bit and so uh, you see where, where you have this little thing in here this is just a delta x right and so that's the secant method and that's the newton raphson method or excuse me the false position method so again looking at the equations they look very similar however uh, if you consider what they're actually doing they're very different because you you may have some serious convergence problems here um, where this will always converge and 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 you know you can look in the book that there are certain certain conditions under which this may converge slowly but it still has the dependable uh, nature that I mentioned about. It has that dependable uh, bracketing method uh, characteristics, whereas uh, a relatively dependable bracketing method characteristics, where the, whereas this is definitely an open method. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to introduce some. In the next videos, we'll 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 introduce the um, uh, iteration the uh, excuse me, let's just flip back over to our outline here uh, we will introduce uh, bracket uh, open methods we hadn't introduced the inverse quadratic interpolation I'll introduce inter inverse quadratic interpolation and then some some other hybrid methods